Hey guys, welcome back to more Entitled People Stories. Hope you're all doing awesome today. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet, and let's get right into today's Reddit posts. Don't use me to parent your kids. I have dwarfism, and this often leads to weird interactions in public, especially with kids. Sometimes a kid comes up to me to ask me why I'm so short, and I have a pre-prepared response for that. But most of the time, they just loudly ask their parents why I'm so short. Usually the parents will awkwardly drag their kids away, telling them not to comment on people in public, which is sad but understandable. I like the parents who just say something about how some people are born like this, and even though we look a bit different, we're still regular people just like everyone else. Sometimes I hear a gem, like I bet he shrank in the wash. What I can't stand is when people try to use me to parent their kids, I'm sure you can think of ways to convince your kids to finish their plate at dinner that doesn't involve pointing at a dwarf in public and saying, that's what happens when you leave food on your plate. Or he didn't listen to his mommy when she told him to eat all his vegetables. It's rude, it's humiliating, and it teaches your kid that differences are a bad thing and that people are at fault for their differences or disabilities. It just pisses me off. A few days ago I was in public and a kid who was maybe 4 or 5 years old was acting out and his mom was clearly struggling to keep him under control. So she pointed to me and told her son that I was one of Santa's elves and I was watching him and would tell Santa about his behavior. The kid's name was on a key ring on his backpack. So I just said, It's okay Hunter, you're already on the nice list and Santa told me you're getting an iPad this Christmas. Hunter was excited. His mom was not. Children were playing let's dump all our crap over the fence for years. I joined in one. I have lived in my neighborhood for six years. I run daily and walk the dog daily, when it's not negative 45 celsius out, but since it's a newer area there aren't that many paths, so I take basically the same sidewalks every single day. About four years ago I noticed there'd always be a pile of crap on the sidewalk behind a specific home. We're talking a basketball, pair of shoes, half of some plastic toy, an umbrella, etc. Really random groupings of everyday life detritus, always on the sidewalk, always behind this house. I have a short dog and also I am aware enough of the world that I know this stuff can affect, say, a mother with a stroller or someone in a wheelchair trying to navigate around it. So when I'd come across it, I'd always move it onto the grass because I didn't really know where it was coming from. Eventually, I'd see it get reported as litter on the local complaints app, and the city would clean it up and that was that. Once or twice, I took a garbage bag myself and threw it out. This happened for years. I had to make a Facebook account for a job I took, and idly decided to join my local neighborhood Facebook group. Scrolling back to read the drama, I came across a complaint about that house. Someone commented, Try being their neighbor. It's like living by a dump. By scouring the comments, I found out that these kids just do this constantly. The parents don't care and have been talked to by the city and the neighbors, and the color of the house of the culprits, confirming which house it was. The kids just thought this was fun. So I decided, why not just throw everything back in? I began doing this in 2021. Shoe? In their yard. Gatorade bottle? Yard. Dog poop bag? Yard. One time a whole Barbie was out there. I picked it up. Chucked it. See, the kids were never out when I was out, so no one really saw me throw it back in. One time we threw the same shoe back and forth six times. Six runs I saw that damn glitter velcro shoe. Six times I tossed it back over the fence. This holding baffled me because I can't imagine the parents understood where all their crap was going. I saw a whole raincoat, big toys, adult sneakers. Like these children were taking stuff from the house to do this. It always slowed down in the winter, but once the snow melted, it came back. One day I went for a run and one of those plastic tricycles was there. Something in me snapped. I moved it to the side and left it there. I ignored it for a few days. Then I went for a walk with my dog and I heard the kids in the yard. I picked that sucker up, stepped far back and with all my might, wailed that crap into their yard. I heard a shriek and the sound of breaking, and then silence. Then I walked up to the fence and said, I better not see any of your garbage on the sidewalk ever again, and then kept walking with my dog. Because really, what were the kids going to do? The fence was higher than they were, it was not gated nor close to a walking path, so if they wanted to see me, they'd have to go down six houses and come out to the path I was on. Their parents clearly didn't give a crap. This was fall of 2022. 
I'm happy to report I haven't seen a single piece of garbage behind their house since. And yes, they still live there. Their artwork is still proudly displayed in the windows. Entitled woman thinks my dog is hers, calls the cops. I totally forgot this happened until recently. The story is a couple years old. I rescued my dog from a pretty bad situation. At this point, Huck is almost 7 years old and I've had him for almost 6 years. I rescued him when he was a year old. I was playing with him in the field that was close to my house. A woman saw us and started walking closer to us. I put Huck back on a leash and started walking home, and she started following. Okay, no big deal. Until she started talking to us. Excuse me, that's my dog, said the woman. I didn't realize she was talking to me. I don't know why, as I was the only one there. But obviously, he was not hers. Hey, that's my dog, she says. I finally realized she was talking to me. No, he's not. I was 17 at the time, and I was really shy anyways, so I hated talking to people. Yes, he is. Come here, Max, said the woman. Huck completely ignored her. He only responds to his name. Huck isn't really a people person. He is a one-family dog. He really only loves his family. He is friendly, but isn't interested in meeting new people. My dog ran away last month and that's him. Come here, baby, said the woman. Then he's not yours. I've had him for six years now, but good luck on finding your dog. Let's go, I said. I started walking home and she continues to follow me. She is on the phone and I overhear her. There's a girl stealing my dog, she said. She called the cops. I went home and she followed. I told my mom. My mom's sister and twin brother came out. The cops came not that long later. I have complete records for Huck, including shots, neuter, microchip, etc. Once the cops show up, this woman starts screaming. She stole my dog. She came into my property and stole him. I want my dog back. Give him back. He's mine. One cop manages to calm her down as the other talks to us. What happened? Asked the cop. I was playing with my dog. She came up, started saying that he was hers and followed me home, I said. In retrospect, I probably shouldn't have shown her where I live, but I was scared and thought telling my mom was the best thing. We moved a few months later anyways. I had put Huck inside. The woman can't find proof that he was hers. We have vet records, pictures dating all the way back to 2011, etc. The last few months we lived there, she was always watching us and kept trying to call Huck over when he was off leash outside. He never went to her and never paid any attention to her. I think it's quite possible that this woman did have a dog that went missing, and that dog probably looked pretty similar to OP's dog. But she definitely did not seem right in the head, and just couldn't accept that it wasn't her dog. It's pretty unnerving that she continued to hang out around your house for the next few months. People stored their boats on my land from a hurricane. South Carolina resident here. I own a beach house with 3.5 acres as a vacation property. It is about a quarter mile from the marina. I do have a boat ramp and two floating docks. This is the first time I have been down to check on the house after the hurricane. I'm assuming OP is referring to Hurricane Dorian since it was posted about four years ago. I noticed a line of about 15 boats sitting parked on my boat storage space. It is a 50 by 50 foot concrete slab I park boats on when I work on them. I have a next door neighbor who retired and he said, prior to the hurricane he saw people showing up with trailers and taking their boat out. They proceeded to take their boats out, back them in, and cover them, assuming due to the hurricane. My property is covered with no trespassing signs as well as a gate with the lock broken on the driveway. My neighbor usually texts me and keeps an eye on the property for me, but he said he assumed I was giving permission to people to store them for the hurricane. I filed a police report on Friday and asked them to move the boats to their impound lot. They refused, giving me an excuse that they don't have a vehicle to tow the bigger boats. Furthermore, DNR was asked to come out and get the registration information off the boats to contact the owners. And I'm also assuming DNR is Department of Natural Resources. They cannot do this because the boat covers are locked. They are ratcheted down with locking ratchets. You cannot physically pull them up to get the numbers off. They also will not cut the cover or built-in locking ratchet straps, stating the reason that these covers can go for thousands and something about it being a liability. The police officer agreed. I was then told that it is a civil matter now, and they cannot tamper with the property. I asked the police if I can get a towing company out to move them to their lot, since they can't. 
They said no, stating that they don't have room for them. I talked to the owner of the marina, thinking he had told them they can park them there. The man said only one individual did show up, and asked if the neighboring ramp and slab was a place to store while the hurricane passed. He has documented proof in the form of an email, giving my phone numbers and contact info in case I wanted to charge them, or allow them. I never received any calls or emails, and I also didn't approve anyone to do this. I took this to the investigator's office Friday. The Gmail account that was emailed is a junk account. The investigator told me he wasn't able to track it as it was a Gmail. Web-based email didn't provide an IP or anything, just information linking back to the Gmail server. I'm tempted to cut the locks off the ratchets to pull the covers back to get the boat information. However, if the DNR won't do it, would I get in trouble for doing it? So that leads me to what do I do? If I'm not allowed to cut the cover to get the info, and the police and DNR won't either, are they stuck here until someone picks them up? These boats are all varied in sizes and pretty new, easily worth up to 100k. Edit. Per the poster below, DNR did issue those orange warning stickers on the boats. After 45 days, they will remove them, and whatever damage done will not be held liable to them or me. But I'm wanting them gone ASAP. And that's where the post ends. So whether some of the boats got moved by the owners or they all just got taken away by the DNR, they all eventually got taken out of there. Dad told me to never wake him up in the middle of the night again. I was 9 years old and woke up from a nightmare. I was scared and couldn't go back to sleep, so I woke up my dad for comfort. He told me to go back to bed and never wake him up for anything ever again. I rarely woke him up for anything, but I made sure not to. A week goes by and it's the weekend, so I'm allowed to sleep on the couch and watch TV. I get up to go pee in the middle of the night and as I'm walking back, I hear a tapping on the front door. I'm frozen in fear already, and I hear the person trying to open the door for what felt like three minutes. They stop, and I see their shadow go across our front yard. I'm still standing there shocked, but glad it was over. Unfortunately, they left to go to the backyard. I could see them because I was still standing there, trying for the back door. And then I see their hand reach through the doggy door to grab the handle. They were just two inches away from it. I was holding my breath at this point. They finally gave up and I muster the courage to move again and go back to sleep. The next morning I tell my dad and stepmom about it. They are freaking out and asking why didn't I wake them up. I reply that I was told not to for anything. And they said it's okay in emergencies. My little brain at the time didn't get it, because the nightmare I had felt like an emergency. And that's all for today, thank you for watching as always. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So take care.